Hello, Outlaw Nation. This is the Outlaw John Roca and Honorary Space Ranger here with my non-spoiler review for Lightyear, the brand new animated film from Disney and Pixar. This one features the voice of Chris Evans as the titular Buzz Lightyear, stepping in for Tim Allen, who of course voiced the toy version of Buzz Lightyear in numerous movies and specials. Lightyear is also the movie that Andy watched, which inspired him to ask for a Lightyear toy in the first toy story movie so this is one heck of a meta film for pixar to be putting out there it's like wheels within wheels here folks and before i get too deep into this review i just want to remind you all to please subscribe to the channel down below hit that subscribe button hit that bell button so you see when we're dropping all the content we do here just like this on the channel also make sure you hit a like on this video and subscribe to me over on Twitch, The Outlaw Nation, all one word as well. And if you want to support us and everything we're going on here on The Outlaw Nation, then head on over to the Patreon, patreon.com slash John Roca. All right, let's get into my review here for Lightyear. A year of work for a four-minute flight. Isn't that something? Lightyear is directed by Angus McLean, who was a co-director on Finding Dory, as well as directing some shorts for Pixar in the past. This is his first feature-length film as a solo director. He also co-wrote the screenplay with Jason Headley, who wrote Onward, and Matthew Aldrich, who wrote Coco. I know a lot of you like Coco for sure. Lightyear tells the story of space ranger Buzz Lightyear, who's on a routine mission to explore sentient life on a planet with fellow space ranger Alicia Hawthorne, voiced by Uzo Aduba. After the sentient life attacks them, Buzz makes a critical mistake during an attempted escape and damages the fuel cell that powers the light speed function on the ship and ruins them on the planet with their scientists and the crew. Buzz tries to rectify his mistake by trying out numerous fuel cells, is assigned a therapy cat named Sox, watches everyone get older, and after one of his attempts, is confronted by Zurg and his army of robots. He has to work with Alicia's granddaughter, Izzy Hawthorne, voiced by Kiki Palmer, and a ragtag crew to fight off Zurg and save his people. That's as non-spoiler as I can be here, folks. Suffice it to say, there is much more that happens in the movie. Overall, I had a wonderful time watching Lightyear. I really did. I really enjoyed how they constructed the story, and although the beats felt familiar to me at times, they still had a refreshing new feel to them. I liked that the film took its time to establish the characters, establish the surroundings, establish the emotional stakes for all of these characters so that they organically move through these beats in the movie in a way that really worked for me and told the overall story in a way that really worked for me as well. And a few of the twists and turns, especially in the back half of the film, really worked, prompting some nice laughs for me and some mild shocks as well. Uh, the voiceover work here is another highlight of the movie. Look, it's not easy to take on a role that someone else has originated like Tim Allen has for almost three decades. But Chris Evans finds a way to make it his own while also offering hints of the Tim Allen approach to the role, which I like. He's too serious for his own good, Buzz Lightyear, but it's because he loves being a space ranger and Evans' ability to turn on that over-seriousness and heroic elements to his voice is always fantastic to hear. I mean, we saw that in Captain America and shades of that certainly appear here for Lightyear. By the way, it's kind of ironic that Tim Allen is now in this Toy Story universe the person they've chosen to voice over the toy version of Buzz Lightyear, because in our world, the real world, sometimes they'll get voiceover actors who have the who, who can do a similar voice as the main actor who originated the character uh, on screen or in a TV show to do the toys because Disney or Pixar uh, can't afford to pay them at the higher level, so they find voiceover actors who can come close to sounding like the original actor. So in this uh, Pixar, or sorry, in this Toy Story universe, Tim Allen is that actor. So I wonder if there's a way to get Tim Allen in this ver in this Toy Story in some way animated. Would be quite interesting for sure. Uh, but, and I wonder how he feels about that, but maybe that's a debate for another time. Anyway, Uzo Adubo's acting here is also so heartfelt, honest, and warm. You can tell that she has a genuine, almost mentorly affection for Buzz and accepts his overly zealous approach to the job, even when it causes them to be marooned. Their conversations are a great window into their friendship and really humanizes Buzz for us. Plus, her sexual orientation here is presented as a matter-of-fact, no-big-deal type of thing. And I think that works really well with the parameters they've set out here 
in the film. Kiki Palmer also deserves love for the earnest, youthful, yet determined approach she brings to Alicia. Her connections to her grandmother when they appear are truly wonderful to see. The twist on the character was also a nice touch, but there's also this drive, this determination to prove herself that I think a lot of people are going to connect to. Taika Waititi's awkward, bumbling, yet well-meaning Mo provides some nice laughs, and Dale Souls is gruff, hard edge yet funny Darby Steele rounds out this crew with the right amount of grit. Also, Efren Ramirez, James Brolin, and Isaiah Whitlock Jr. bring some nice flavors to their roles. But it's Peter Soans' socks that steals the show. The moments they give this cat will have you laughing and smiling throughout the film. He's funny, he's honest, and dare I say it, he's ambitious in his approach to caretaking Buzz. He is a great accompaniment to Buzz that keeps surprising him and us as the moviegoers, and his perfectly timed moments of seriousness will have you laughing after your shock wears off. Now, I've said this already before, but that socks merchandise is going to fly off the shelf, so I suggest you go and get some right now. I also enjoyed the animation in Lightyear. Look, it's easy to accept the photorealistic look of the latest round of Pixar films and forget to stand in awe of what we're actually getting to see as moviegoers. From the planet's surface to the rocket ships, to the characters' outfits and emotive faces, to the night skies, to the scenes in space, it all works so well to deliver a believable setting for all these moments. Plus, there's a spacewalk in this movie that is so realistic and well animated that it will give any person, whether they're scared of heights or not, a true taste of what a terror-inducing situation that might be to be in. If I have any issues with the film, it stems from some of the telegraphed emotional moments in the back half of the movie. There's like two or three moments that you kind of see coming a mile away. And I think if there had been some more swerves in the script that might have taken us a little bit off course, it would have helped those emotional moments to land a bit more strongly in the film. Plus, I also can see some people having an issue with the look of the film looking so updated. So 2022, uh, when this film was supposedly set before Andy got his first toy back in the 1990s in the Toy Story movie. But that's picking at nits. Son, picking at nits. I give Lightyear four cowboy hats out of five cowboy hats. This is one of the most enjoyable and moving times that you will have in a theater this summer. Does it belong in the legendary section of Pixar movies? No. But does it belong in the damn good section of its library? Absolutely, it does. The story carries some deep emotional weight that will have you smiling, laughing, crying, and smiling again. It also does what Pixar does best which is entertain you while also teaching you some powerful life lessons about the importance of forgiving yourself, the dangers of letting guilt tell you up from the inside out, learning to trust others, and embracing the words from something like the serenity prayer. Now, for those of you who don't know that prayer, here it is. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Well, that's what I think of Lightyear, and I'd love to hear what you all think. Let me know in the comments section below what worked for you, what didn't work for you. Did you like the film? Did you not like the film? And would you want to see a sequel? Because I know that I do. Remember to hit a like on this video and share it on your social media with the hashtag TheOutlawNation. Thanks so much for watching this non-spoiler review from me, Space Ranger and Outlaw John Roca. And until next time, say it with me. We're off to infinity and beyond.